come in handy for the fire when we've done this canal. Sowerby Bridge, which marks the end of the Colden and Hebel navigation. So it's the end of short locks and uh, back to normal length 70 72 foot locks, which is the normal of the network. And it also marks the beginning of the Rochdale Canal. And boy, does the Rochdale Canal start with a bang, with the deepest lock on the whole network system in the UK. This is Tule Lane Lock. It was built in 1996 to replace the old navigation locks. There was two here and this one lock replaces those two. It is 19 feet, eight and a half inches deep. That's six meters. It's a monster. You can't go through the lock on your own. You have to have uh, a, a lock keeper, CRT lock keeper help you through. And during this time in the winter, there isn't a permanent lock keeper here to help you through. So you have to book your passage uh, 24, 48 hours in advance. So we've booked our passage to today. We're going through at 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. So looking forward to that one. I'm only having to reverse because I've shot past the junction. <laughs> it's supposed to come from behind and turn right. I thought the junction was after the bridge. What a day. That's Amadeus, Constanza's husband. Watch the chimney, sorry. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> we should have took that down, shouldn't we? And we have a volunteer lock keeper waiting to take us through at the top. So the lights are on in the tunnel, we're safe to go. Never normally cruise on a day like this. No way. We've got waterproof trousers. Everything I haven't. On. I just You're got my jeans soaked. on. I'm soaked through. But, well, we're dry now. We're in the tunnel for a minute. Let's just stay here. <laughs> oh, here goes. Pretty daunting, huh? Head to Biggin. I can't remember which side she said to us to go. <laughs> taking this side which is the opposite to them wow I think she wants you that side first side of those gates which side did you want us this side or that side? Wowza. <laughs> Keeper is a volunteer who actually watches our channel. I bet she's cursing us for booking 
a day when it's like this to come out. We do apologise for bringing you out on this right long <laughs> day. Scotland, Rich treated me to a really <laughs> expensive, I'm not going to say how much it was ridiculous money, but this pair of steel skin gloves because I have ray nodes and my fingers get so cold. Even in these I've got frozen fingers, but if you look at Rich's hand, There's steam coming off of them. <laughs> His hands are so hot he's actually steaming. So, I can't stand um, wearing gloves. We'll see how these go because it is a problem for me in the winter. Um, I've got actually tire cooled onto them around my neck and through my sleeves like you did as a kid because I am not losing one of these with the amount we paid for them. But let's fingers crossed. We're making slow progress. I think we've gone up about two foot in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like ten minutes. How long do you reckon we've been in here, Fran? hour <laughs> <laughs> no we've got to have been in here 10 minutes i reckon going up do yeah. you think well, i don't think we're even halfway yet at least we're not crushing around banging around no, like when you us, opened the lock gates for me she's given us an easy ride <laughs> well we made it it's taken us probably about half an hour i think to get through this lock and Kath, our lovely lock keeper, has told us we're okay to moor up for here for the day because it's just too awful to carry on. So that is exactly what we're going to do. And this is brilliant. They keep wood out of, fished out of the lock here. So if you want sticks for fuel, you can just help yourself. Kath, thank you. Thanks, Kath. Cheers. Thank you. Sure. Somebody forgot their debit card. And somebody forgot their ID. The only reason we're going into Halifax is because I need to pick up a parcel. And uh, it wasn't until we got on the bus that Fran realised she'd forgotten a debit card, but that's all right, we paid for the fare in cash. And then as we're travelling along on the bus, Fran says, you got everything you need to pick your parcel up. I haven't got my driver's licence. So we walked all the way back, which is about a mile and a half. <laughs> And now we're back at the bus stop again. But you do depend upon me to bring out cash no, and do. cards, don't do. you? Yeah, I always and do. And I'm normally quite dependable, but you it must are. be being a married woman has done this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not often you see an old market like this, is it, Fran? Brings back memories. I used to be a market girl myself in the old days <laughs> in the East End of London, <laughs> selling toys. 
but it's fantastic. It's much like this, but not as grand. This is a beautiful big old market hall, big old glass row. So why are we looking at Woolstall? Because we're having a granddaughter. <laughs> I was going to say we're having a baby. We're having a baby. We're, we're having, having a, a granddaughter. A granddaughter to you in um, well, just about Christmas time. Yeah. So I'm going to get the crochet hook going, I think, as well as the weaving. Uh, so a little, exciting a little one on its way and we can't wait, can we? Nope. We might even need a bigger boat. <laughs> We're not going to be in here for very long. What do you think of the piece all, Fran? It's amazing, just just to think that, that the whole area, all the mills we've seen, I must have seen hundreds of mills now, all up and down the hillside. Each would have had hundreds of workers, I guess, in their weaving. Yeah. And all came here. How many rooms? Three, <laughs> 315 rooms, each selling cloth from various parts of Yorkshire. So, it's amazing. It's... Um, what do I say now to describe it? You have to start that bit again. It's, it's retail hell there. That's it's, what it is. It's <laughs> a very expensive area selling stuff that boaters have no need of. No, like <laughs> soap, like soap bombs, bombs, like cupcakes <laughs> for in your bath. <laughs> but it's lovely. It is lovely. It is well, amazing. today. Been up for a couple of hours struggling to get the boat warm. You can see we've got a nice frost. We're here in Hebden Bridge <laughs> and we're taking a walk to a village called Heptonstall which has remained largely unchanged apparently, hasn't it? Yes. I think. I don't know much about it. No, neither do I. Old cobbled streets and old buildings and it, we've been recommended it's a lovely walk. So. But this is the route <laughs> up there. And it probably steep. doesn't look as steep on your television. Believe me, it is. <laughs> slowed the dogs down a bit. Not slowed me down though. I've got my new boots on, so I'm okay. Slippery. Got your new boots on. New boots on. Giving my glutamus maximus a bit of a workout. What? <laughs> This grave here marks the burial place of David Hartley and he was 
what they called one of the coiners, King David they called him. And he was responsible for almost bringing down the monetary system in the UK because they used to get coins, chip off the edges of the coins, melt them down and make new coins out of them. And uh, for his sins he was hanged in York and his body was suspended in chains in Halifax and here's his resting place along with his father, his grandmother and uh, grandfather I think by the looks of it. Interesting place. This original church was standing in dates back in parts to the 12th century. And in 1847, a storm badly damaged it. And it was decided that they would raise funds and build another church. And for the princely sum of 6,666 pounds, the other church across the way was built. And unusually, this was just left to go into ruin. It's a real, evocative place. Another reason for coming up to Heptonstall for us was is to pay homage to the grave of Sylvia Plath, who uh, took her own life in an oven in 1963. She was a poet and married to our one-time uh, poet laureate Ted Hughes and uh, tragic character she's only something like 31 2 when she died but here's her grave in the past it has been defaced by many a supporter of Plath's who uh, didn't like the idea that Ted Hughes's name was on the gravestone so uh, his name was chipped off on occasion Ted Hughes just took the stone away, had the name re-put on and put back in place. As you can see the name Hughes has tried to be defaced again by somebody so yeah the uh, what's the word passion lives on. It does yeah. And you read the book didn't you? Her, her one yeah. and only novel which was The Bell Jar. I read that quite recently really before we got anywhere near here it was just on my book list to read. Um, yeah. Somewhat. I don't know why we have a passion to visit graves of people, but <laughs> we seem to, not us, but it seems to be a thing that we have to visit. But it's not a bad thing to do, is it? Give a little no. bit of time and thought to somebody. Yeah. Um, right, yeah. we'll do that then. Just coming in. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> We've uh, just stopped here to take a breather. This beautiful scenery behind to uh, give you an update on what's going on. Big, well, not such big changes, but maybe. Yeah. We've been thinking some time now that the holiday cottage has been quite a lot of hard work for us and not regular enough income. In fact, I'll go so far to say it's probably no income at all, but yeah. the time we pay out for it. So we hope that we've sold it. We're actually going to sign contracts on it next week. And um, by next week, it should be emptied. Any possessions that we want to keep will really be on the boat with us and there might be just a little lockable storage unit with some photographs and a few pictures that we need to keep and everything that we own is gone. After the wedding all the few friends and family who, who stayed in the village <laughs> came back and uh, we were forcing items of furniture and <laughs> lamps They were like them. a <laughs> hold of locusts going round just grabbing things from under our noses. Yeah, but, but we were actually great. saying, please take this, will you? You're doing us a favour. So yeah, we've just got to go back next week and uh, empty the place out. But we are, we're not going to be 
we're not going to just spend all the money. That's tempting, isn't it? <laughs> we, the idea is that we're actually going to buy a little flat or a new cottage or hope, well, probably a flat that we can just rent out as a residential let because we're not fully retired. We've got a tiny little bit of income coming in a month and we need income from the house really. So that's the idea is that we can put something in the hands of an agent and not have to worry about it. Yeah, so we're great. looking for properties all around here, aren't we? Yes, really? all along here, the West Yorkshire and uh, North Yorkshire areas. So every time we seeing a lovely town like Hebden Bridge and Todmorden, we're looking. And some of the mill conversions we love on the flats and it just seems a bit appropriate that we could have a mill side, a, sorry, a canal side mill apartment yeah, for us. Lovely. Yeah. Um, so we're looking now, we've got to find somewhere. Yeah. And with the balance from the money, we were intending, don't say it too loud in case the boat can hear, but we were actually yeah. going to so we've thought about selling the boat and upgrading a little bit because we know we want to stay on the boat for quite some time, foreseeable future, don't we really? Yeah. So we were thinking of selling the boat and upgrading and getting a bigger, better boat. But We've been looking and looking <laughs> at boats and uh, we've come to the conclusion is that yeah, we can spend 60 grand on a boat and who knows what we're going to be buying, who knows what problems we're going to be having in the future. And to be honest, we love our little boat, don't we? Yeah. It's uh, just ideal for us. You could, we could do with a bit more space. But having said that, we could actually utilise the space we've got a bit better. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We decided to keep Constanza. We're not going to sell. We need a little bit more money put into some shelving and storage and sort a few things out. We're going to sort the bathroom out, get somebody to come in and sort that out for us, put a new shower unit in. Uh, jiggle the kitchen around again it's not quite right and hopefully get a, a little two-seater dinette built and put in there so we can both sit at the table not just eat but we you know we like to play cards and scrabble etc crosswords and, crosswords, and uh, we do spend a lot of time sitting down reading the paper you know at the table so that's the plan and we both we've made this decision on and off over a good few months we were going to sell the boat do the boat up but every time we decide that no we want to keep the boat we both go oh. right. <laughs> and it feels right we like the boat we don't need an, an all singing all dancing boat no but no. as you'll know anybody that's watched us from the beginning will know that we had great intentions of doing all the DIY ourselves but we're, we're really not keen on doing it no we do simple so. things like painting and and we haven't had the money to pay for people to come in and do it, no, have we? Haven't, we? No. So this will help us to get the boat just as we want it. And we'll carry on doing the things that we can do, the painting and the outside mm. stuff, yeah. and as much as we can. So instead of spending 40, 50 grand on a new boat, we're gonna spend a lot less than that and do up the one we've got. Yeah, yes. So that's where we're coming from, that's what we're doing. And we're happy, we're really happy with that decision, aren't we? We yeah, are, it's just, just like a, you know, we've been looking at boats for months on and off and uh, we haven't physically been to look at them, but we've been looking online and uh, we haven't seen one that we really thought, oh yeah, that, that ticks all the boxes, you know. After two years on our boat, I think we know the problems and none of them are major. It just needs a little bit of sorting out, so and We know the boat's happy. quirks inside out, don't we? We know yeah. that little boat from top to bottom, front yeah. to back, so yeah. That's the plan. So roll on Constanza. <laughs> <laughs> Rock me Amadeus. <laughs> <laughs>